Welcome to Rosa Parks, the catalyst of the civil rights movement. I'm Nigel Fusco, and I'll be your guide today as we take you through both the life and more importantly the civil rights actions that she took that would forever shape our fledgling nation. Rosa Louise Lee Parks was born in 1913 and grew up in rural Alabama. Her father was a carpenter, her mother a school teacher. Rosa's parents separated when she was only two years old. Her mother, Leona Parks, homeschooled Rosa until the age of 11 when Rosa enrolled in the Industrial School for Girls in Montgomery. Preceding Rosa Parks, the most visible thing that happened was the death of Emmett Till. He was a young black boy who went to go visit his relatives in Mississippi and was accused of whistling at a white woman at a grocery store. He was then dragged out of bed and murdered by the Ku Klux Klan. His mother, upon claiming his body, insisted on an open coffin. This forced the nation to confront what was a brutal, ugly side to the racism and segregation of the South. Rosa experienced racial segregation and injustice throughout the course of her childhood. Under the Jim Crow laws, African Americans and whites were segregated in almost every aspect of their daily lives. What you basically had happening was the establishment of CORE, the Congress for Racial Equality, which was founded to fight for civil rights. They used direct, nonviolent means, which was really trying to force people to look at what's happening in terms of segregation without resorting to violence, highlighting some of the inequities. Things like what Rosa Parks did in terms of sitting on the whites only section of the bus would be an example of nonviolent protest. In 1913, Rosa married Raymond Parks, a barber from Montgomery. Raymond was a member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, who at the time was collecting money to support the Scottsboro Boys, a group of African American men falsely accused of raping two white women. In December of 1943, Parks became an active participant in the civil rights movement by joining the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP as one of its first female members. In 1943, she was elected secretary of the branch. What had been happening up to this point in time was that the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, was using legal action, taking cases to court, and trying to get legal redress in terms of specific issues of segregation in the South. The Brown versus Board of Education case is a number of families that came together, nine families in total, to address the issue of segregation within schools. It was a legal victory. The Supreme Court ruled separate but equal was not in fact the case, but was actually detrimental to the well-being of children. And so they struck down this idea of segregation. We'll take further action in order to make that into a reality. So the Brown ruling actually does nothing in terms of integrating schools immediately. You don't have the actual integration to take place until 1957. Parks took the bus to work every day. As a seamstress, her hours were long and tiresome. This particular day, Rosa Parks was just very tired. She decided she was not going to move. The other blacks moved when the other bus driver asked them to move, but she did not. Then the police came on, they arrested her, and that night after she was arrested, they called the lawyer in the town because she was very active in the NAACP. Then once they bailed her out, the lawyers approached her and some of the leaders. E.D. Nixon was one leader who said, listen, we need to do something about this. Would you let us use your cause and fight this segregation of the buses? She agreed to go along with that. Parks later explained in her autobiography how she was not attempting to change history on that December evening. Parks stated, quote, if I had been paying attention, I wouldn't have even gone on the bus. The NAACP, before Rosa Parks' arrest, had planned the Montgomery bus boycott. Her arrest was a catalyst to challenge the segregation of public buses. She was a member of the NAACP. There are many people that feel that they set her up to do it. It's true, she had actually demonstrated against some of the bus practices before. There were other individuals who had also taken a stand before Rosa Parks. One young lady, who was about 18, had taken a stand, but they didn't follow through on the charges. The blacks in that situation had to get on the bus, pay their fare, then get off the bus, and then go to the back to get on. If the bus was crowded, all the blacks had to get up and move back. The Montgomery bus boycott lasted for 381 days. The African American community labored together to maintain the effort and worked to find alternate ways to get transportation, despite the intimidation of white people. Once they would boycott for over 300 days, they would shut down the bus. People walked, they carpooled in order to carry out their objective of staying off the buses. Once the federal government passed the law which desegregated the buses, she, along with Martin Luther King, would be the first ones to ride the bus again, and they were able to sit wherever they wanted to. So she had a tremendous impact. She played a major role at the NAACP, which was the organization that really pushed the movement.
Enough riders stopped using the city transit system to cause severe economic suffering, making the boycott extremely successful. Instead of riding the buses, people planned carpools. Car owners volunteered their vehicles to drive people to various destinations. And because she was not a person of privilege or wealth or of status, she was someone with whom many people could identify. And so this helped to bring not only many people who had the leisure time to be involved in politics, but also brought people who were just ordinary folks into the movement to change the status of segregation and to achieve greater rights for black Americans and minorities in general. So a powerful, powerful symbol that led to, in the short term, the Montgomery bus boycott and demonstrations for additional civil rights and voting rights, especially within the South. In terms of the long-term impact of Rosa Parks, it goes without saying that the civil rights movement relied on this symbolism and used this symbolism to promote greater rights for minorities, for black Americans, and as we know, now segregation is illegal, our voting rights are assured by the Voting Rights Act, and because of that, there are expanded rights, generally speaking, in the United States. Rosa Parks was a distinguished individual who had a great influence on the society around her an influence that will be felt by future generations. It seems to me that it's very valuable to see several things. First, here is really a single individual who decided to take a stand. Oftentimes we think of how change happens in history and we see events take place by people in power. This is a common person who decided to stand up against power and because of her stand helped to set off change that brought about the civil rights movement and institutionalized those changes into our society. And then, in addition, we can see how it shows that a movement that comes from the grassroots, and she is a part of that so-called grassroots, can change society. It's not easy. It took a tremendous amount of struggle. It took a lot of time. But it did, pretty much, achieve its initial goals. And then finally, I think the last lesson that her witness, or her demonstration, shows us is the fact that changing discrimination or challenging limitations on rights is not something that comes overnight. It's not something that comes easily. It's not something that comes without sacrifice. And in most societies, there's oftentimes a tendency for powerful institutions to put limitations on individuals' rights or the rights of minority groups of one sort or another. In order for those rights to be assured, maintained, and when necessary, expanded, it's necessary to have a movement similar to the movement she was a part of. And without that kind of commitment and that kind of desire and struggle, Rights are oftentimes not only limited, but also lost. I'm Nigel Fusco, and this has been Taking a Stand with Rosa Parks.